in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I've been thinking very carefully about the subject of transformation. I really have been passionately thinking about the subject of transformation. I am convinced that any man of God that lacks the ability to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming men um, should not be in ministry. This is my honest opinion. Number two, I believe that any platform, whether a church, a fellowship, where the presence of God cannot prevail over men to bring them first into conformity to the image of the Christ and second, to be able to bring them into the reality of their inheritance in Christ, that place deserves to be shot. It does not qualify to be called a church or any kind of gathering whatsoever. Praise the Lord. So all the teachings that we bring here are designed to achieve many things. Um, you must understand. Number one, designed to help us know God. It matters to God. It also matters to me that we know God, that our knowledge of God continues to progress. It's important to know God. It really is important to know God because in the knowledge of God is our confidence. Please listen. In the knowledge of God is our stability. If your knowledge of God is very low, you will not be able to survive today's world. Are we together? It matters. Thank God for the wonderful testimonies, but the pride of the believer, according to scripture, is not in the acquisition of things. Please listen very carefully. Whether you have a car, whether you have a house, whether a door was opened, whether you get married, whether your wife gives birth to quadruplets, all these wonderful things as interesting as they are, they are truly um, secondary matters. The real pride of the believer is your knowledge of God. No matter what you have, if you do not know God, you don't have anything. It's difficult to understand this because we need most of the things we chase. But I'm telling you, by and large, the real pride of the believer is your knowledge of God. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. He says, let him that glory yet glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So the messages are designed to give us encounters, to increase our conviction about the person of God. Number two, the messages are designed to show us God's methodologies. You, you have to write this. The teachings are designed to open us up to what we call the ways of God. His methodologies, the way he operates. This, this, this camera man is operating this camera through knowledge. He knows how the camera works. It's not enough to be given the camera as a gift. You must know how it works. Are we together now? Both of them are standing behind their various gadgets on the strength of knowledge. No one will just get up out of zeal and stand behind the camera. They will not be able to do anything much. 
it matters not only that we know God, but that we understand his ways. I will continue to repeat this until you are well indoctrinated with this truth. That the knowledge, please listen, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his person is infinite. It will take us eternity to really know God. But the knowledge of his ways, as far as our excelling in this life is concerned, they are finite. They can be learned, they can be known, and you can apply them. It takes a fool to believe God will put infinite methodologies to continue to learn as far as our excelling is concerned. No. The keys that we need to excel in life are finite. You can hold them and know that these are the keys given to men to excel. So the messages are designed to show us, to cause us to see. Number three, the messages are designed to allow the Holy Spirit to invade our lives and produce dimensions of results in and through our lives that only God can produce. The messages are like ushers. So it is not unusual that whilst the message is coming, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the midst of his people, bringing deliverance, bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs. The messages were designed to be conducive for the operation of the Spirit. There are certain things that cannot be taught. There are experiences that only the might of God can produce. This is the limitation of the teaching ministry when it is done purely from a religious standpoint. It will only end up educating people. There are some results that do not depend on education. People need to encounter the power of God and have situations in their lives change immediately. Praise the Lord. There are believers who come before God with emergencies. They don't need to learn any law. They don't need to learn any principle. They can learn when the situation has been solved. The urgency will not allow them to give God their attention. So you're not going to bring, you're not going to help them by trying to say, oh, you are in a situation. You know, listen, listen. Um, you'll be learning a lot today. You hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that. Um, God's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alert. You know that. Um, you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alerts. But that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on wealth. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot, we, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous. Because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds that will not allow them. Let me give you an instance. A man of 60, 70 years, intellectually speaking, his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25. Is that true? And so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough, to experience breakthrough, that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship. So unique to that man's condition, he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow. 
you will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding because he probably will be sleeping when the message is going on. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God. This is very powerful. Now, if that guy begins to allow you to use his life as a standard, you are in trouble. Because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him. So he will say, you can see my life. I didn't do anything. God just keeps blessing me any day. And then you try to do that at 21. And you will be very surprised. When God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them. It's how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory. So we have a little here and a little there. Like materials for building a house but not well structured random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our mind and we fish out anyone in the face of danger we continue to fish them out one by one hoping at least one can work but platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy so that your understanding will be very exact you are not guessing This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. This is your your home we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house your home we welcome you today so come up here that is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection, to a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word, to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way, 
and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere. And then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God, you do not get these results, you hold the person liable. Many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions. Just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? While you are, you are debating, you are suffering and your family members are paying the price. Take the risk. Trust something. Take the risk. It's worth the risk to throw yourself and say, let me at least believe something. God, help me. If I fail, let your mercy be there to pick me up. But take the risk. Don't stand in foolishness today. You are here tomorrow. You are there. You are arguing. And while you are doing that, time is going. Take the risk. You must believe something. When Jesus met people who had convictions, he had respect for them. Although their convictions were on wrong philosophies, he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact. Are we together? Mm. A man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. He's a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they wouldn't let Jesus alone to preach. They would be at his crusades. And yet they would never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara. You have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go. And leave the man in peace. And ten cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening. But you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. Is asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what he can do does not mean you will ever experience him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this, verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember that this was not the first time. He was beholding the face of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, he saw at a level. Now he's seeing again and he's seen something different that he did not see before. And there was rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. He said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer 
is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom, your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than here. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to hear. Like those who are outside now, without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. Not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we are not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up please, it's projected. It says, unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse, we're reading tonight. It says, and to make, read with me, all men see stop it's a ministry given to a man to make men see all men not some men not to make men of God see you are mandated by the grace of God to make men see because it is only as we behold that we are changed hearing does not change people as we behold him as in a mirror the Bible says the glory of God we are changed Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is through spiritual illumination. So come up hither is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see. To allow your eyes to see the deep things, the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen, success generally in life is, is a measure of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do, but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself, you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where the major ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the, if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor 
of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, and we believe that by that initiation, we have become Pentecostals, as we call ourselves. And then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say, I've been born again five years. They say, how long did you know the Lord? You say five years. That's not a very correct answer. It may be correct historically, but it's not correct in terms of transformation. You are not five years in the Lord. It's your results that will show how old you are in the Lord. You are five years from the day you got born again historically. But that may not be a measure of your true age. In the realm of the spirit, our age is measured by the light that we command. We excel in light, not in time. The degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth. So we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing, from when we consciously gave our lives to Christ, we believe that automatically, as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be engaged through knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge, knowledge along the path of a field. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards, but when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves. And you know, sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time. Usually, when an election or an appointment in church you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. But it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step although it's 10 years you got born again 10 years ago but the first correct result producing step started in 2019 so technically you are about to be one years old as far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned imagine if that one year old man is your man of God is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. The confidence he has in his ignorance will affect you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, 
to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change. But that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them, that's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved, now you have the flexibility to change. And when you find out in truth by the Spirit and by the testimony of brethren around you that Jesus is truly the way, the truth, and life, you stay there in life and in death. This is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the Spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. There is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men. And the Bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept, this way of life can, can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their Christian experience. Colossians chapter 2 please and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. It says beware lest any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Now this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of you know all kinds of theological dimensions but it is true that there is something called the traditions of men and that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15 we'll read from verse 2 Matthew chapter 15 now some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples watch the story we're reading to verse 9 why do thy disciples transgress what the traditions of the elders someone is asking Jesus a question now so let's listen to what Jesus is about to say for they wash not their hands when they eat bread 3 but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, it is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, thou mightest be profited by me. Six, we're reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free, tradition created that concept. You, you get the point now? Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Please take note of this. Let's just finish up. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh, These people draweth near to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Last verse. But in vain they do worship me, 
teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In rising to superior spiritual dimensions, the Bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon. We are going to confront a, a resistance. Are we together now? And the Bible calls that resistance not Satan. He doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride and move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours. I think I need to put this disclaimer very clearly. Are we together? The idea any, listen, any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted. Because growth in the spirit that comes from God must also come with his nature of humility and love. Are we together? These two things must, they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart. And then the richness of the love of God in you. That if I claim to grow spiritually and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me. It could be that I am being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form. Number one produces humility. Number two produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending, correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body it should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see, to open their eyes. When I rebuke them, it is a grace. When I correct them, it is a grace. It's more than a desire. You've heard me say, correcting the body of Christ is a grace. Just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct. Because in correcting, many people have begun another error. It's easy for error to start. It just starts as an opinion strongly received. And very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it. And enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial. There is a grace to correct the body. There is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth. So I'm putting this disclaimer very strongly so that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations. No, my position as a person about the body of Christ is very, very clear. I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth. I was sent to the body. Are we together? It matters that we understand this. So that if the things I say sound difficult, for instance, then you, you refer to what I just said, that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm, the goal is to wean us out of imperfection 
to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth, hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly, that still needs correction. Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away? And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. Because I do not believe it. I'm not interested in it. It's not working in my life, for instance. So I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if for instance... I have thought that healing is wrong. Miracles are wrong. And now I have found the truth. I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say what is miracle alert? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle alert. But it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. And I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. Then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert and that's all you will get. The end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. You cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been, spe has been pegged around the, the, the ignorance that it is God's God's, it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? Yeah. The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. -P -S. It can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. It talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride or as a product of aberrated encounters that were not consistent with the word. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around 
respectfully let me call what we call um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement that several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven are you seeing that now and if you are not careful and and by this i'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain on to dressing and all of that those ones are established truths that were there long before i know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of god that that has transited in glory now that kind of thing the the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are free the word of god is still lord even over the realm of the spirit you have to understand this you can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things remember that in the realm of the spirit anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it and come back with doctrines that later will become traditions precepts ordinances there are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not tithe in hell i don't believe that there is nowhere in scripture that shows that non-tithing takes a man to hell there are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ. Just because of issues here and there in their lives, they still found them in hell. I don't believe that. <clears throat> listen. Jesus, listen very carefully. I teach you sound doctrine when lazarus listen carefully lazarus and the rich man the rich man made a request and he asked he asked jesus he said please let lazarus come back to life huh and let lazarus come and preach to my brethren and tell them that i am there in hades the place of the dead and then he says no they have the law and the prophets that means he said even if Lazarus should come back to life they will not believe but sufficient is the law and the prophets listen to them I still speak to men who are in the earth realm and I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men the average believer now is not sure whether he will make heaven or not it's like we're waiting to see let the trumpet just sound and then I will, if I'm qualified, I will know. But it's wrong. When a woman is pregnant, she knows. When a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that vague? It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? Yes. There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now that will destroy the saints if not adjusted, if not upgraded, and sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of these concepts with you and then if God grants grace we can touch a few and pray am I boring you hmm. number one there is a big problem with the biblical understanding the biblical concept of greatness greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of Christ what is the standard of greatness what is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment? Please listen very carefully. 
Where is the line between striving to be all that God designed for you to be and lost? You have to pay attention because in both cases you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light. Speak to me believers. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And yet you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain. So while you want to quickly rise to the shining light, here comes another scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Then it continues by saying we brought nothing to this world. And it is certain that, listen carefully, I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world. But that having food and raiment, let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says, I search for a man. You know? To stand in the gap and I say, Lord, I'm the person that will rise. The next verse you are reading is teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. Please listen to me very carefully. Because many innocent people, people destroyed houses that they started to lintel level. Somebody came with a vision and another person will carry bulldozers and scatter everything and say this I will, and will be a missionary. By the next week, he will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him, ringing the bell and shouting and say, repent, I know what I saw. He, it may not be a lie. But something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man. Ten years later, he will find out again he was wrong. While he did that, his children did not go to school. While he did that, the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it. Life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself. That's why God is teaching you this now. There are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back. But you can't return others who believe what you said before. What is the balance about greatness? This greatness thing has been fought. Another concept. What is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be matured in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes. They will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, you will not become a child again. You are an adult, is too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know that this person is matured spiritually. There are many parameters we have put in the body of Christ and many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until we leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Have you seen that? There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai. The kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher? 
or to be a soul winner. Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls. Nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. You notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says that just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says that just shall live by his faith. Next concept. Our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. The discussion has come up here. A higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. Vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way. No way. There's no evil in God. And the person cannot die. Another person will say, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your spirit, not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person. And the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. And then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme that anything at all that represents, even if your car stops on the road, Based on the propositions that have been given, you have questions to answer. The first question is, where is your faith? The second question is, where is your God? Now, many believers are confused. And then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie. We have extended it now to fight songs. We fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look, and he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song. Rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept. One of the very controversial ones again. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering partaking of a grace and so on and so forth it's a very serious concept in the body of Christ there are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues there are people for instance who have made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man there are people who will not eat food until it is approved there are people who cannot travel until it is approved. 
when, when a woman is pregnant, her pastor knows first before her husband. And yet the Bible says what God has joined. Let no man. It didn't say let no spirit. put. That's a way of putting asunder. Because the man can say, well, that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own. And the same Bible says, wives, submit to your own husbands. There are members whose salary the pastors know to the digital detail. That even their wives do not know. All of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship. There are churches that are almost like cults. You cannot make up your mind that, look, I'm tired. I love you, man of God, but I think I need to leave. I, I sense that God is calling me somewhere. Any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving, the man of God takes credit for it as his grace fighting you. Something is wrong. Listen very carefully. Remember the disclaimer I gave before I started? You now see why I gave it? Cult-like approaches of Christianity. A man of God can step into any house at any time. Peace be unto this house. And just say, what do you have? Oh, man of God, what do you want? Anything for you. Okay, uh, pounded yam and vegetable soup. Let me have goat meat. And, and you know, all, all kinds of things that we do. These are poisonous concepts. What of the ones that they collect? A, a, a member will receive the blessing from God and buy a new car. And the pastor will collect it. What of houses that have been collected by people in the name of, uh, of, uh, of Isaac? Are you seeing that now? I'm addressing concepts with you. What of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor? That you sit down and veto that I... As a man, I will never mention my name. I, as so, 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 as so man of God. I hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me. And I use my spiritual authority to break this marriage. And the son says, yes, sir, your wish is my command. It's occultism. What about accrediting life partners? That a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden from nowhere, the Jew's wife or the Jew can look and say, this guy is a serious partner in this church. This woman is coming to carry him out of the church. It is scattered. Dangerous and devilish. What of choosing for people where they should walk? Simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church. God gives someone open door of 250,000 in, in, in an oil company. And he has another job of, of 35,000 35, near your neighborhood. And he said, I know God. I, God wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound. And I rather keep you there than to employ another person. What of turning members into masons to build, to build, please don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. The message is called come up here. We are challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit. They are traditions of men. If I'm building this Koinonia Cathedral, and your head does not carry one block. That's how difficulty will remain on you. No, sir. No, sir. And you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head. And I shake off every, every, uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? Every difficulty in my life. Now, listen. That also does not mean that by faith you can connect your service to breakthrough. Because people have done it. They have connected their service to certain victims. There is a provision in the dealings of God, but it's not by threat and manipulation. It's by revelation.
This is what is going on every Sunday in this country, in Africa, and around the world. What of the issue of seed sowing? I believe in giving. I believe in seed sowing. You are greedy, you don't sow seeds, you will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. Design in the system, no matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you? You keep it there. And what is not working for you, you can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against, against my experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember. And I'm, I'm, I'm so, I mean, two of us, pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing. There are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator limited edition how much is it 85 million and everybody begins heads of department bring 10 10 escorts bring five five and you know all kinds of things is wrong all in the name of fatherhood this all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood i know a man of god respectfully so that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like, like Aaron and her. And the man of God believed that testimony. And from that day, Provide, even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying, he will tell the son, I'm on my way going. And the son will, it inconvenience them. Sincerely, it's a true story. Almost tore the marriage apart. Because when God blesses them, the, and you know, it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price. Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive fatherhood fathers in all honesty and respectfully so have been some of the greatest abusers of church members all in the name of fatherhood and remember the idea is don't talk against me don't talk to me you dare do that a cause will come and truly it will come don't think it's just a joke it will come but the idea is threat you don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ. Especially in recent times. It looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lost driven materialistic lifestyle. I come from a very conservative background. It's an advantage to me. And my persona as a person, I'm, I'm quite conservative. But the level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity is, is becoming disturbing because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people, you are qualified for a harsh attack. An attack under the covering of materialism and it's not so. Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? 
what part of it is different from the English you are. You see, all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven. No matter how you get there, God will fix up every remains of you that arrives there. But for now, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of it. It's terrible. And then on the other side, on the other hand again, I'm telling you there are people sincerely, let me tell you, I've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous. What did I call it? Poisonous. Dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes God out of your life. Lost, lost after things. Do you know that, let me tell you this sincerely, You've, you've seen this suicide happening all over now. People dying around. I believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people. Because if I teach you, for instance, that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old. Are we together now? Yes. No husband, no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house. You will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside you just brought it? Oh, amazing, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, they were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything. That is nice. Oh, come to my house. We we'll tie ribbon from one side of the building to the other and the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not, I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down and is on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this we've won? 700 naira. Ah, you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of we've won. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down? This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and debt is yoking their neck to death. Because of a point that was trying, was, was trying to be the proof. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over. And now open a branch in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri. They killed it. Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we're privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront 
of the move of the spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky and your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks and they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on a phone and say that I had an encounter and the devil says this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. We pride in these experiences. I am a woman of God because I see visions every day. I am a man of God because I see visions. A believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says, I'm going on a three-day fasting. Lord, what is in this vision that I can't see? Are we together now? And you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital. With, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. I'm, 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 it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I can, now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. 
because you have taught something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people working in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut the mouth of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks finds. There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions they just want this out of body experience desperately they want to come back with messages and they've had it and many of them you know that there are different pseudo christian sects that have all kinds of encounters they can they they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels To the point now we are confused in the body because we have to balance this it is all right when an insincere person encounters these graces but what happens if these graces have been received by your friend do you call your friend fake do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what they call it, phones. With all kinds, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something. See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers? It was a tradition. Anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals, you will know that these are things that... It's, it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers. And it's part of the things that because God is preparing the church for the move of God. And so some of these ordinances have been restored. But if they are not guided... Any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You'll find your own path and you're singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands. More grace. It says lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? 
Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying, forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings who attempted to correct scripture. And that's how error came. A time will come, I pray it does not happen, where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see, these mysteries you see, if it's not guided, you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we're concerned about because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh, his ascension, his glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say, there are many people who say, ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night vigil and I want to share a mystery. I say, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fishes demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you would never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Habba. God speaking, Habba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither. Is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you'll be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ my true worth is the blood of Jesus my true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars please listen to me you will never find me depressed not over money not over house I will excel God will bring the houses he will bring the cars but never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence. A newer car 
or a better car will not suddenly make me know that ah, God you are faithful he's faithful the apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did is God speaking to someone now this must be the basis of your confidence this is this is a this is a vaccination against depression Apostle, look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. Leaving God because things are not going well in your life, my brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still King. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? No. I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman you see follows me almost everywhere I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition and she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to go. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth. Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk. God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. If I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I will say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir, I'm a ministry for life this thing we have come is not it's not an ambition to use and make money it is not because we didn't have options it's a call by revelation we have pledged our life and our blood so when people love god and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry say me i've retired oh, what are you doing i want to start a block industry did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry no but somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. Please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost his precious loved one and I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. 
And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song, and I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God would say, no, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. It doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. It's the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day if you don't learn the ways of God. There are times that you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life when your business fails, when your property is repossessed, I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience that in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma Megirma, 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 Babu, 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 Sing it one more time. If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit some of this, this space here. Some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because we know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these are mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these are fathers, stand. But just to make sure that uh, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. 
Our pregnant ladies are... No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If you are pregnant and there is a reason why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We're not doing it to demean the younger people. But we're doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice cloth. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that would cause pain in your wardrobe. You just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside that you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God, as a believer, and I stop you, and the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? Right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we're going to pray until you come up here that this night. <laughs> what, what I've been looking for, I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up here that. The visions you've been wanting to see, you will see it this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness. Please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against your being prosperous and your being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that. In a bit to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received, there is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Cobble in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist 
in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing. That have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart. Consumed my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Very powerful song. Sing it one more time. Yeah, you have captured my heart, consumed. My heart with your love And if all I say is Jesus Jesus, Jesus. That's more than enough If all I say is Jesus Jesus, Jesus. Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters. To know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all cost. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dressed, you say, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is packed. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important, 
because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come, Sam. Come, Pastor Alpha. Come, Pastor Femi. Now, look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me, for instance, that you stand among them and you feel, I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear, to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more. What's the other part? I've got something more than gold. I'm telling to the world. It does it's more. One more time. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. Ah. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself, Jesus, Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to the world, 
Jesus, you're more than gold. Tell it to the world. Somebody met me years ago and said there's a trend of suits, apostle, that at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ. God forbid, but if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house, before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible, I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. <laughs> and it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books, and I can carry my phone. My contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. 
it is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you, check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. Is you. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect. Demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No. That's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding. That everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our lost, driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea 
the carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says with all this you're going to church, look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information. It is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross. Let me tell you sincerely. He stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned. And then my promoting the interests of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Hmm. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I would drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the wealth of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard, and through my life and ministry, he has become a man of God, for instance. This is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you, I am great, tell him, show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, 
Who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness to bear witness to the truth that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or, or, or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. Is you. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver laid before him my achievements laid before him and say Jesus you are above them all that when men clap for me because of things I remind them that none of these things can take his place are we together we are going to pray thank God it's raining you will pray you will pray there's boss to carry you but you will pray Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me volume. Much less love and endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hey, your presence is heaven to me. Sing it from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Your presence. Is heaven to me. Your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Your presence. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. I 
Hallelujah. First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. Business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. Be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, oh Lord, oh Lord. time. the things of this world let me show you how to truly be great when you come up hither Jesus also comes up hither in your life higher higher than anything Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired, on account of my certificates. They are not useless, but they are nothing, nothing to be compared. Jesus Christ. Detach me, oh God. Detach me, oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. 
and with it will go the suicidal thoughts. I detach myself. The pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now listen everybody. We are praying. There are many of us here. We come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories. Where the prevalent mindset. Is earn your respect. By the things you show. Are we together? Now there is nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us by default are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentleman, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say, my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in, but refuse to allow yourself what come from being able to be pregnant. Pregnant or not, Jesus exalted in your life is the greatest asset you have. Living in a rented apartment or not, Jesus, in your life, Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony. Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to work miracles. And you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason. My greatest testimony is Jesus glorified. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is that God dwells in me. The Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. We are going to round up shortly, but listen to me. There is no telling the degree of pressure. Some of us are sitting on pressure every day. Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God is his hand to prosper you so that you will buy a car and rush back home and say finally you want a car here it is if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold truly if all I have I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than Prophesy gold. one more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles 
that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed, I agree. But remember my teaching, when your soul dies for you to prosper, it's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us, those of us who are parents here and listening, let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me, to, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. We are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there would be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody put pressure on you and say, bring this. Some of you at home right now, you don't even have gari and sugar and you're embarrassed. Because when they tell you, confess, the, I am a child of God, I am a this and that, you are ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my brother and my sister. Every one of us, there were times, we, we, you, you hear me share my story here. I'm not ashamed of yesterday. Because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is gari, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are a shame. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. Are we together? I want to drum it. It is ugly to see men attached to things. Praise the Lord. I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer and it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you are in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture, 
that is able to make you wise unto salvation it takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know god and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your christian life Are we together? Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Thank you, Mecca. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, Say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty acts. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged however it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged listen very carefully it while it is true that it is not a the best reflection of the Zoe life if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life it is the flawlessness the dexterity the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of God however because the treasure is in earthen vessels it is also not unusual please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged god in his dealings with men knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negates the reality of the victory of Christ. And so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not a righteous. The righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not the affliction of sinners. There is something called the affliction of the righteous. Now, it doesn't really matter how it came. The most important thing is that it is there. And that there is a provision. Next, um, it says, but the Lord... This is your advantage. Many are the afflictions of an unbeliever. But he will remain there because he does not have the Lord as his anchor. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the Lord who can deliver him out of them all. Out of them all. So, the embarrassment is not the challenge. Listen, believers, stop allowing challenges to make you feel I'm not a Christian. Maybe it's because I did not pray. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The Bible tells us that many are the afflictions. So it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivered him. So God is a deliverer. He delivers. 
he delivers him what is deliverance i've taught you deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits no is the parting away separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress it's called deliverance the moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress be it demonic be it mental be it physical in whatever variation and fashion it comes the lord delivered him out of them all many are the afflictions of the righteous so it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire and while that is happening rent issues financial issues while that is happening maybe his spiritual life is going down while that is happening and he sits and feels bad and some ignorant believer comes and say oh dear it's just because you don't know god your life no no the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but when you remain there then you agree with that situation that the victory of christ is a lie that means when you find yourself in that situation the revelation of the fact that the lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort um, comfortable are we together don't find comfort in that situation you get up and begin to press the woman with the issue of blood knew she understood that she was a daughter of abraham the one who was took uh, you know bound she did not know but this one knew so she could not heal herself but she was already rehearsing oh jesus should come around this place as soon as jesus came she knew already she pressed and touched the helm of his garment never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of god the victorious life your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the the reality of the victory of christ i love naman the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something, praying about it, reading about it. There's, there has, if you are at ease, when things are not going well, it's a sign that you are not a serious believer. It is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself. But you should sit down and say, look, where do you know that God is moving? where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i have read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i have not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom. 
You see that now. He does not know what to do. But one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of God. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, the excellency of your knowing God is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection. That insistence is what the Bible calls faith. It is not the wishing, your insistence to see to it. I know I don't have a child now. No problem. I will not kill myself. Many are the afflictions. So there's no embarrassment. You can say whatever you want to say. Ah, call me a barren, well, men are not bad, no, barren woman. Are we together? Impotent man, whatever you want to call, no problem. However, I've read in my Bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother. So I will not just conclude and say, well, God, one day. No, 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 no. In your quietness, you say, Lord, just because I said thank you for my condition does not mean I will keep quiet. I'm thanking you because the Bible says, listen, the Bible says in everything gives thanks. It's a law. It has nothing to do with results. I give thanks out of obedience, but I insist out of faith. Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight. So that you will walk out of this place enlightened. These pockets of gaps and imbalances, why believers continue to mock themselves. You insist. And your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom. Did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who, who, who just packs debt on the road. There has to be a way out. I don't know the way, but I know there is a way. You see it now. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no mat listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find the way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God so a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done you may be good in your prayer life but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life so you must stay and say thank you Lord for the one I've seen but show me the one I've not seen that's why the Bible says meekness because you see let me tell you this when you have results in one area of your life usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere no you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely that you're a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous that you are prosperous does not mean you have character you have to approach these dimensions per dimension until every one of it and let me tell you this the more you conform and receive results the more christ can be seen through you people look at your life and they can see the completeness they know that this is how a believer should look like if you see me limping i'm a human being human beings can limp 
There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry continually, I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill you one day, but eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day, but you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school, you will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks, but I came for this miracle service, thanking you for the one you did March, April, but also admitting that my life is not yet in experience, a reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere listen let me tell you listen listen to me listen to me listen to me the bible says as i hear you declare before my ears not as you wish there is nothing to be ashamed of are we together now when you come before god this is like a threshing floor when you go to an injection room with the doctor if they say turn and receive injection you don't say ah doctor no 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 no, no. that's that's not his business the doctor is free you are the one who is in trouble are you getting what i'm saying now Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray.
Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, O oh God. Matesh Khalifa Saha Secretary Bakata. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 praise the Lord we are going to pray Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 and the Lord visited Sarah as he said there was a day he said it but did not do it there was a day the prophecy was still in motion now the time came when what God said he now did and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken verse 2 and Sarah conceived this is the proof that God visited her something happened in her life that did not happen before something happened in her destiny there has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone pray? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. the king. 
King of kings and Lord of the Lord, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty. My people need to go. But if you don't let them, they cannot serve me. Tell failure. Tell delay. Tell defeat. Hali parus kabaranta Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, hey. let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. Yes, the key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. Yes, the moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Shalis kabaru Unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O oh God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith.
Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Please listen to me. I want you to be very sensitive. The spirit of faith is strong in this place. Please listen. We'll be very fast tonight. The real revelation is what you have received now. The prayer, the miracles, and this is something that just comes in one sweep. This is the sustaining factor. You will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your life. Because these are the things that are bought prophecy. If you don't put them in place, you are wasting your time. It doesn't matter what comes. Please hear me. Whether you are outside, following online, please, I want you to listen. There is a God that doeth wonders. And God can arise. You see, the thing with God is, it is the process that takes time. When the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests. And you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation. And that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing. You see, every time you see death, death and infirmity go together. Are we together now? So the healing that that healing grace we're trusting god that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two i will continue to pray this until i see it in your life i truly believe listen to me that there is a dimension of favor that the church not just individuals must shift into otherwise forget about the ease to serve the purposes of god this issue of god today money tomorrow god today argument final is, is a is a is a demonic thing you must press for these graces as we pray hallelujah father we have come again you are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now we're going please listen we're going to be very fast I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time listen take away anxiety just relax there is a God who is mighty it will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. All our The Lord is showing me, I'm in a vision now, and I'm seeing chains, people's feet with chains. And the Lord is saying, this is what has impeded people from making progress. You are moving, but you are not making progress. I'm about to pray for you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight. I'm seeing chains. I want to pray now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, in 
inside and outside. Bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance. Overflow one. Just overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God come. We have to be very fast. But I'm praying now. You're going to shout that name that is above all names. Listen. This deliverance is not just for you alone. Some of you came and left your family members for years. You are still in the same spot. You love God, but there is no progress. I want to pray for you now. At the count of three, there's such a strong anointing. In the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names. I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cost those chains now. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Shake the Inside and outside. I decree and declare. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please. So that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros Kabaruda Shalakatos Kebriandas. Alusha Brenda get it. We're still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online. This shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families. What looks like a door on that chains, it must leave right now. One, two, three. I command every chain. Chain of darkness tying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need a chain falling. I need a chain falling. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals. The Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first, physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me there are all kinds of barrenness in this place physical barrenness financial barrenness spiritual barrenness I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three right now that anointing is coming on people inside and outside those with physical barrenness issues God is stepping in right now and those with all kinds of related barrenness issues God is also stepping in at the count of three. I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you 
enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo, I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, Amen. God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray, it will take lives. People will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing, will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising call this state shalis kobaratakata bratekateka kokabarukata embreketesha i command liberty by the spirit of the living god i command liberty by the power of the holy ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now, now by the Spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma, and it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service There is something called Aleku You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again Where are you coming from? Where is Benway she from? You're from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. Ah! I, know you now. I command that devil ah! out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge. Relative to the grace that confronts him. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy. In 
to that dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside, overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we are going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? The... Yes. Like a boundary. Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from. Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter. Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady, as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor, favor, that's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, no, no. It's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing... I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. <laughs> By the power of please, why are they don't please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Patatu, sir. You are from quarter two. Quarter two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here. When it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant. Like very evidently pregnant, but you are not pregnant. This is, I don't know what this is. This thing is just protruding like this. The power of God is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you man that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this? Why is she here? Okay, Jennifer. What's wrong with her? Huh? She's not feeling fine. 
Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? She's just not. Okay. It's before that she was mad, but now it's not like that. She was mad before. Yes. When uh, it has been now uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to. This means when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We're going to minister to the sick. We have to, if not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me? My dear, how are you? You can hear me? Yes. I will pray for you, eh? And Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have... Huh? I didn't ask them to come out. I said, protocol, you people should be able to work with the people so that we don't have... You are the one? Come. Where are you from? Paladin. Paladin. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, I've done many scans. What did they tell you is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant. Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save a big, major marital problem now. Husband, sir, come. Thank you. Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. God just wants to save you. Very little things like this can tear marriage, not into two, into pieces. And want to, want to help them. Where are you coming from, sir? From Samar. What are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. And God provision for the wedding. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Healing. Are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is why I'm, I'm saying, I don't know. We're going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, you see how this kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now. Watch the power of God. Ah, the power of God. Oh, this, let me tell you, the anointing is very powerful. It's not for showmanship, it's like a drug. Just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, madam. Let me tell you the truth. You will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. And this, I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach. I lose it right now. And I release you. I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone. You have not gone near halfway the budget. Eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Kai. When is the wedding? Oh, 12th of October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. There's a prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Surprise this, my dear brother. More than enough for your wedding. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare be healed right now. Be healed completely. 
in the name of Jesus be healed completely your name is Jennifer okay I'll pray with you come I'll just lay hands on you all this Jennifer I'll just lay hands I'm not getting any hold her collect the child please father in the name of Jesus Christ take away this reproach that I see in this family in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning in Jesus name please come quickly in the name of Jesus come my dear may the Lord bless you and honor you come reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus the power of God is coming on one ushering lady it's an ushering lady I'm seeing a mighty deliverance reproach is living right now by the spirit whether inside or outside I'm seeing one ocean lady the power of God is coming upon her father in the name of Jesus let that miracle take away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ take away reproach you are Jennifer in the name of Jesus I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear my dear Hold our hands, two of you. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Because both of you need the same miracle. And God is giving you that miracle. He's terminating shame completely from your life. There is, I'm seeing a man here, you are a pastor. I know there are many pastors, I can presume, but who is a pastor here? Sir, please come. You are a pastor where, sir? Come again. I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't hear, let him come. I'm seeing you You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you and then i'm praying for you you will see the miraculous in a very strange way you may not lay hands on people like this but the spoken word as you are speaking you will see god begin to honor you and things begin to happen can i pray for you sir in the name of jesus i release you into these dimensions in the spirit and everything that has been said i command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ the Lord is releasing speed. Now, please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed. Ten years in one, ten years in one, ten years in one, ten years in one, ten years in one. By the spirit of the living God, I command speed for you. Ten years in one. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare speed, 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 speed. Speed over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it. You are not wasting your time. You are receiving speed. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ 
You are a pastor? Come. It's time to enter a new dimension. Step into a new level of grace. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Signs and wonders through your hands. In the name of Jesus, I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand. Just that media stand. I'm seeing, and it's still the same grace for speed. I'm seeing media stand. I'm seeing that grace. There are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you. And I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic. The prophetic. I will do an impartation by the end of the service. But two ladies and three men. A real grace, real grace, the eyes, the eyes to see. Kalu sabra tu shele tu saba. I quicken that grace, quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Shatu sebeka tu kashala baruti asadash. Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we're wasting our time. We're going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where did they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. See, let me teach you something. You see, the word of God is very powerful. Believe it. Believe it. Don't, don't sit arguing and saying, will God touch me? Will it change my life? No. God will more than surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for this lady. And I decree and declare. the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things. But when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet. Because... You will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
my friend what do you do come this man this what do you do any businessman sir a businessman where in dandume sir come again dandume dandume katsina state katsina state yes in dandume i want to pray for you you love jesus yes sir don't let anybody don't be embarrassed eh don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor yes sir you see what i'm saying does it make sense to you yes sir. i yes, hope sir. you're not embarrassed yes sir that, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked and you too you should do it and customers will come it's not true listen let me tell you paul can plant apollo can water he's only god that brings increase i want to pray for you father what's your name sunday Naemeka, what's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka, I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing the hand of god coming on several people for ministry but listen now this doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry but the call of god has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call i'm stretching my hands lord i don't know where these people are Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Online, in the main auditorium here, Father, anyone that your call up is upon his or her life, I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now. And let them know that it's not just their imagination. I declare by the anointing and by the Spirit of God, Draw them into their various callings, into the various mantles, the trainings, the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit. To become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now, but I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage or a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now that anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction. Especially geographic direction. The Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying. They don't know exactly where to be based. This, is, this, this sounds funny. But the Lord, there is an anointing that is coming. Giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying lord should i stay should i go should i travel should i stay in the country out of the country i'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of 
situations that don't represent the counsel of God. We have to pray and trust God. We're going to do this very, very, very fast. I keep seeing something in this front row. Just these people in front. I kept ignoring it, but I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that God is showing me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was lost Restoration shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. There is somebody here. The Lord is bringing an anointing into your life. You are getting into oil. Listen, listen I'm serious now. Please listen to what I'm saying. This can be a life and death prayer. You see, this spirit of death that is just sweeping around, killing people like chickens all around someone will just say headache and fall down and die i pray for you in the name of jesus christ i forbid the earth from receiving your body i forbid the earth from receiving your body and i declare every spirit of kidnapping whether in zaria here kaduna that will just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. Two more prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit, signs, wonders, miracles the gifts of the spirit I call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life I speak to you, please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic, the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone who is weary. You are tired. Life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency. And it's as though you are about to give up. It's like the grace to continue is not there. By the Spirit of God, I supply fresh fire for the journey. Every leader here, whether a campus leader, prayer group leader, Bible study leader, church pastor, whatever kind of group, I pray for you. The dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups, your fellowship burning, I supply that grace upon you now. We prophesy over Zaria. We speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here, I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify. Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends you lost valuable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God 
I call it back into your life now. I call it back into your life now. Praise the Lord. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, we are late, but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus. Please, let's minimize movement. This for me, I believe, truly without exaggeration, is the greatest miracle. I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. You are here, overflow one, two, three, four. I want to give you an opportunity in two minutes. Please run, overflow three now. You can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time. But if you are here, overflow one, two, two B, and then online, please make your way here quickly. Let's celebrate them as they come. You're saying, Apostle, I want to win that war. My friend, keep stretching your leg carefully, eh? You don't have to, yes, you, the man with the crutch. Keep coming quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight, I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my savior, you are my king, you are my Lord. Tonight, I receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that I reign in this life from today and forever I have eternal life I'm a child of God forward ever and backward never amen please keep those hands lifted father we thank you the Bible declares that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away thank you for bringing this one so God to make that declaration we declare according to the authority of Scripture that a new life begins for them tonight, a life of victory, a life of grace. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Now, there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back. Please, all of you, just follow the gentleman in concert and there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly. Thank you for your patience. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain